Hello, my name is Noelle Kinney and I'm president of the Cranberry Arts Council. We are so happy to be able to present our art inspiration series featuring nine different workshops led by three incredibly talented local artists. Grant funding for this program has been provided by the Middlesex County Board of Chosen Freeholders through a grant award from the Middlesex County Cultural Arts Trust Fund. The Cranberry Arts Council is very proud and thankful to have been awarded this valuable grant for our community. We are thrilled to have artist Tamara Warrenchuk with us today. Tamara is a retired art teacher with 40 years experience in New Jersey schools. She's a graduate of Glassboro State College and holds a master's degree from NYU. Tamara works primarily in acrylic and mixed media, focusing on developing beautiful textural surfaces and integrating pleasing color schemes. Tamara's award-winning work has been shown throughout New Jersey and she's a trustee of the Ocean County Artists Guild. Today's workshop is using deli, paper, and collage. And now here's Tamara. Hello everyone and welcome to our second mixed media session, Deli Paper. Mixed media opens the door for experimenting with a vast variety of materials, perhaps even some that you've never even considered. In today's demo, we are going to explore the use of deli paper. Yes, the stuff that your tuna sandwich comes wrapped in. And this is going to become part of our collage work. Deli paper comes in a variety of sizes and it usually has a shiny side and a dull side. The dull side is the side you're going to want to use to print on because the gloss will repel the paint. So what I usually do before I begin is I'll pull a stack of paper, put them all matte side up so that I don't have to worry about that while I'm working. So that's a really good way to start. We're going to begin today um, working on large sheets of watercolor paper. Um, I actually work somewhat larger than this. This is about a 12 by 16 sheet. Generally, I will use a half sheet of watercolor paper, which is probably 24 by 30 or 36. It gives you a lot of room to push out and experiment. But for the purposes of this lesson, I didn't think you'd be able to see all that space. So I'm limiting mine. And maybe for someone who's just doing this for the first time, that's a better way to work. It, it really works within your comfort zone. Um, we're going to prepare several sheets of layered colored paper first on the watercolor paper before we begin our deli paper. Um, I'm going to tip this view now, so I hope you can see this workspace a little bit better. Um, and I want to draw your attention again to the color wheel. I know I talked about this uh, during the first session of mixed media, and I had said that no matter how many times you paint one, you learn something new. And I found this to be really true. Uh, this is a color wheel that I made in a in very intensive color class that I took several years ago. And you can see all the, the beautiful range of colors. But what this color wheel does for you more than anything else is it shows you color relationships. If you mix any two colors when you're going to be doing this next step, any two colors that are directly across from each other, like a red and a green, or a blue and a yellow, I'm sorry, a blue and an orange, or um, <clears throat> let's say a purple and a yellow, you will get mud. And you want to try to avoid that as much as possible because that's very hard to repair. When I say mud, opposite colors like red and green cancel each other out when you mix them together. And so they muddy each other. They make each other look gray or they make each other look brown. If you want that color combination, then you know how to do that. However, uh, you may want to avoid that when you're scraping because it will not, it will not look attractive and your colors will all become very dull. Another thing just to note for painters is we often shade things using black. And that is not how one is supposed to shade. You're shading, and I know I did this with, with kids in school, and it was an interesting learning experience. We painted an apple in red, and then to shade it or to dull the color, we mixed some green in. We painted a banana, and to shade it, we mixed the opposite, we mixed the purple in. We painted an orange, 
and then we use the opposite of blue to shade it. So it's a very important thing to remember color relationships. And also remember, if you want to lighten any of these colors and create tints, you simply add white. But when you're working like this and scraping and pulling your paint, color groups are very important to remember. If you pick any colors that are next to each other, they are going to work beautifully. They will not muddy each other. So that's just kind of a good thing to think about and remember as you're working. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to set out a sheet of watercolor paper and we are going to put some paint on here. Uh, try to remember as much as possible to give your paints a good shake when you use them or if possible store them upside down the night before if you know you're going to be working the next day. Sometimes you get a surprise and it won't come out or this ugly block will come out and that's not what you want to do. So what I'm going to start out doing here is I'm going to put a streak of orange in two different places, some yellow, and then I'm going to be careful not to put the green too near the orange because of that muddying concept. And then the fun begins. You can use a putty knife and different sizes from Home Goods or old credit cards, AC Moore. Remember AC Moore? And you're going to pull this paint across the, the page. You don't want to make too many pulls because it will get too intermixed. But I'm starting to get some interesting combinations here. Now, while this is still wet, and I do have quite a bit of extra paint, so I'm gonna kind of scoop it up. I'm just gonna leave it on a piece of deli paper, and I'm gonna take my deli paper, let me take it from my pile, and I'm gonna put that matte side down, and I'm going to press it. What I'm doing is actually pulling some of this paint off of the paper. It won't change the look of the painting on the paper, but it will give me an impression on the sheet. I put these aside, let them dry. They don't, it doesn't take long because the acrylic paint will dry fairly quickly. And I'm going to reuse them. I still have a couple of wet spots here, so let's just walk around this and block this up. Now because the deli paper is translucent, later on I'm going to be gluing pieces of this on to here and you will be able to see the background come through the white areas of the deli paper. Let's just try one more. Um, put this aside and try a loop. You can put your ink and out your paint on in many, many different ways. Um, some of them will turn out well, and some of them will not. And that's the name, that's the game of mixed media. Always a surprise. Let's try some different colors this time. Let's try some blue. Let's go with a different green. Um, maybe a little reddish. And I'm gonna keep that again away from the green. This time, I'm gonna put a streak of blue across the top. And I'll use the palette, the palette, well, not the palette knife, the um, cutting knife. Now, I kind of like those white spaces in between. And let's do one or two crosses this way. And then Let's try some little wiggles of paint. This is just fun to do. Um, and usually what I will do um, is prepare several sheets, maybe five, 10 uh, to work with um, and let them all dry and let the deli paper dry and work, for, work with those as a background. They can become backgrounds for many different things. Okay, so we have some Nice things happening here.
Okay. Now, do I want those white spots? Uh, I'm not sure. I think, oh, maybe yes. And again, I am going to blot and blot. and block. Oh. Oh, well that's kind of a, an interesting pattern. And pull. All right, so that was another way. You can try to put your paints in a circular form and move to the outside. Uh, you can put white along an edge and then put other colors in and draw that down. Uh, possibilities are endless, it's just play. Um, this is a little bit too much paint here. I do wanna scoop that off. Okay, so I, again now, I'm going to let this dry. But that's a nice background for something that will come later. Okay, now, now we're gonna start with the deli paper. So let me make a, another stack. Once you get started doing this, you just don't want to make one of each technique that I'm going to show you. You probably are going to want to make two, three, five. Um, the more you have, the more surfaces, color combinations you will have to work with. Deli paper, by the way, um, can usually be gotten in larger stores like Costco um, or online at Amazon, of course. Uh, and it does come larger than this. I like this is a nice comfortable size to work with on the surface that I have. So now, what am I gonna do with this deli paper? The same thing that I just did before. So let's wipe this card off. Uh, maybe a little better wipe than that. Mixed media, as you saw by the first round, is very messy. Um, so uh, paper towels or a must. Uh, to keep around, to keep your tools clean. You want to do that so that the colors don't intermix. I wouldn't have wanted the colors from my first sheet that I made to mix with the second sheet. All right, so now I'm going to basically do the same thing on my deli sheets. Um, now I might want to use the same colors that I used on the previous paintings, or maybe the same colors plus maybe one new one. And what I'm going to do here is I'm going to cover the sheet of paper or the sheet of deli paper. I'm using the card right now to make some designs, a little drippy over here. Okay, so I have, I can go out to the edges if I like. But I've got a nice little pattern here of reds and purples with a little dash of yellow. Okay, I'm going to leave it aside to dry. You need a lot of drawing space when you do mixed media. Uh, let's just lock this up so we don't get it on the back. Okay, so that was credit card. Let me do one more of those. Um, and put all the paints in one area. Let's try doing this. Let's try putting some green, yellow, probably using a little bit too much paint. It's kind of, sometimes it's hard to judge. And drag it down, drag it down. Drag it down. Okay, so this time I have something that looks quite a bit different because I've separated my colors. Okay, again, side to dry. Now, never let it be said that we waste anything in mixed media. I have globs of paint on several places here on my table, so I'm going to print it. Because you never know, you might end up with something that might work. Or not. Okay, so now I have blobs that 
could be used maybe for flowers or leaves or whatever. Again, let that dry. Okay, so the next stage, we've done the credit card and you could also use the, uh, the putty knife for that. Um, the next thing I'm going to do is I'm going to use a roller. Now, um, this is actually called a brayer. The correct term is a brayer and usually it's used for rolling ink. Um, we do a lot of, we use this on our jelly plate. Uh, this time, I'm going to put some paint. I think I'm going to reverse this and I'm going to put this paint on here. Um, you could put it on a plate and then roll it out. Okay. Two shades of blue might be nice. And this time I'm just going to roll, 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 maybe cross back the other way. Spread out the paint, but you get a slightly different texture this time. Okay, easy enough. And I have some leftover paint on my brayer. I'm going to take that sheet of paper from before and I'm just going to roll the ink right off of it on there not wasting anything and let those dry. So what I'm building up is a, a bunch of pa colored papers that I'm going to be using in my next part of the project. Um, a foam brush also works quite nicely. Um, you might want to use that to kind of stamp some patterns on your jelly paper and then take a second color, small amount of paint. Does not want to come out. There we go, that's a little bit too much, but that'll work. And this time I'm going to definitely leave white spaces in between. So that's another tool to use. Now, things like your foam brush will harden with the paint. So I always have a bucket of water nearby um, just so that I can use that brush again. Okay, and we're leaving that to dry. Now, um, after I've created several of those watercolor sheet backgrounds and several of those, or more than several, quite a few layers of deli paper, and I'm going to let them dry, now I'm going to put it all together. And that can be overwhelming because where do you start? Uh, sometimes you'll actually see something in the print that you've made. And sometimes it's simply a collection of colors. So now you have to come up with a way to now make this into a something. Um, one of the ways to do that that's very helpful is to use a piece of mat board. Um, these mats are small. Normally I would use a larger one, but these pieces of watercolor paper are fairly small. So I want to use something that's going to fit around it. So let me cover this up so we have a clean surface again and pick up one of those designs that I previously made. Okay, here is this one. Now, actually it looks pretty nice the way it is, but I could use a piece of mat board to find the best part of it. Maybe I like this part, or maybe I like this part, or the very center. And I can cut this down to fit that size because that might give me an idea for a composition. Um, here's a smaller one. I'll turn it to the right side so you can see it better. Again, I have, I can make a decision on what part of this I want to include in my picture. So that, that's a good way to find a place that kind of inspires you. Now, let's talk a little bit about composition because it's very important to have a plan. And these are some ways that you might think about planning your next step. Where am I going to put this deli paper, how am I going to arrange it? And so in this way, this is called directional. Everything is going in one direction. It could all be coming down. It could all be going diagonally. So that is one way to plan. This is called a bridge. 
a bridge is a design that works its way across the paper. Um, it doesn't have to be centered. It could be up, it could be down, but again, it's a repetition across the page. A cruciform is another form, and that's basically a cross across the page, but they don't, they don't have to be the same width. The upper part is, is the same width. This is narrower, this is longer. This could be moved to the left, it could be the, to the right, but again, it's a plan. And then, of course, radial, radial designs, and I, that happens to be one of my favorite ways of working in circles over circles over circles. So sometimes it's good to have a plan. Now, these are still drawings, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to show you ones that I did previously to this lesson so that it will give you an idea of how things are working. Um, this first one... This first one is a background that I prepared with scraping with the, um, with the putty knife. Then I took a piece of cardboard uh, and I stuck the edge of the cardboard in white paint and I made a succession of lines, a bridge across the paper. And then I used a stamp, a plain old rubber stamp that you can buy in, in Michaels. And I printed this checkerboard again as a bridge across the page. Uh, so now, then I took a sheet of deli paper and cut them into strips, a variety of sizes, some wider and some narrower. And I'm going to glue these across this page, following, sort of following, the white lines. What's going to happen is that I am going to see some of my background through the jelly paper. You can use either matte medium for this, or you can use gel medium, whichever you prefer. Matte medium is thinner, uh, and the gel medium is thick, like a jelly. And so it's very important that you put the glue down first, then the paper, and then the glue back over the top. It is important to do that because you can, you can get air bubbles. You might get them anyway. Um, and you need to go over that several times. So now I'm just developing this background. Um, it's abstract. Um, it could lead to another idea uh, for painting or drawing something realistic over the top of this when I'm done. When it's dry, you can certainly draw with gel markers. You can draw with permanent markers. Um, you can follow some of the lines that have already been glued down here, or you can recreate an entirely new composition. These are just fun backgrounds. And in many cases for me, they serve as a beginning rather than as an end of a project. Sometimes I just place them around my studio, look at them for a few days and inspiration will hit. Um, another interesting thing to do when they are done is to do some calligraphy over them, um, you know, letter a poem or letter, you know, words, uh, names, um, so that it becomes a very interesting surface for decorating. When you're gluing, make sure that you are gluing the paint side up so that you're getting the best color possible. And now I'm going to go back over. You will see how it bubbles and I'm pushing out the bubbles to the outside because I want it to dry nice and flat. Okay, all right, so I have something that looks like this. Um, kind of um, interesting, I like the colors. Uh, and again, this is not the end of this. I could do so many other things with it. I can stamp over it again. Uh, as I said, I do love to work with circles, I could stamp circles, I have sponge stamps to stamp over it, um, words. Uh, there are just so many ways to work with this. So let's put that one aside and show you another one. Sarah, do you have that extra light? I don't know why it got a little dark again. Very dark outside. Yeah, I think it's the rainy day. You had that extra, yeah, that even helps. Perfect, thank okay. you. All right. Um, okay, and this second one, 
I did a scrape background, which you can see in yellow and green. And then I took some ink. Um, this isn't the color I used, but um, Dark Martens makes beautiful different colors of ink. And I just simply used the dropper. I dropped along the top, tapped it, and I let the orange run down, and then kind of tapped it again and let it shift over. So I had these interesting little drips. And of course, when I looked at that, it reminded me of stems of flowers. So what I did then was I looked for a, a sheet of deli paper that had a sort of a pinkish tint to it, and I tore these. I tore these roundish circles out and glued them down. And some of the green from the background does show through. Um, now, with mixed media, you can do so many interesting things. Um, if you have access to old jewelry, broken jewelry that's been laying around or that you don't want anymore, or you know someone who has interesting bits and pieces, this is the time when you can add something like this to your background. These are brass designs. I, someone gave me a box of bits and pieces of jewelry. And of course, as a mixed media artist, you never throw anything away. And these can be glued down with something like Gorilla Glue or they could be stitched. You can use, um, let me see if I have one handy. No, I don't. Um, and all, which is a, uh, I'll throw this, um, looks like this. It's a, it doesn't necessarily have to have this type of an end. It's actually a leather tool. Um, and I use it for when I'm uh, putting wire on the back of my paintings to make the holes in the back of the wood. Um, but it makes a very nice hole. And I can punch a series of holes around these and one in the center, and then I can stitch them down using some kind of string or embroidery floss. And again, it adds another element to the design, and now it's become semi-real, it's become a floral. So that's another way to treat one of these designs. Another way to work is to draw a pattern. This is a flower. And I took a stack of three different kinds of deli paper. I traced the pattern on the back. And then I cut out a series of these small flowers. And now I'm going to glue them onto my background with matte medium, overlapping some of them. making sure that they're not popping up, putting down glue, putting down paper. Oh, this one got folded. Hmm, not quite, there we go. And again, I, I have a lot of white on these deli sheets, so the background color is coming through. Let's put it in there. Okay, so now I have these florals, patching down the ones that I used before. And I have a collection in the middle. I could put them in a vase. I could probably turn it this way and paint a vase. Well, maybe let me, let me see if I can do that for you. Let's see what that looks like. Again, it may be successful or not. Let's try a little bit of blue and a little bit of this blue. I'm doing this off the top of my head. No, uh, no plan here. And we'll leave a little bit open in the middle there for a little bit of reflection. So now it has a base at the bottom. And then again, this is not dry, so it will not work perfectly, but I want to give you an idea so that I want you to understand that what that your um, your background isn't the ending. It can be the ending, but again, there are so many other things that you can can do with it once it's done, and maybe you've sat and looked at it for a few days. So now I kind of have a little base 
little green in there too, with my group of flowers, very simply done. Um, I can draw, when this is done, I can make centers. Uh, when it's dry, I should say, when this is done, I can make centers with um, other colored paper. I can draw them with a permanent marker. Um, I can use the back of a pencil. I'll use the brush for, and stamp right in the center and have some fun with it. So that's another way to use your background and your deli paper. Um, what I would encourage you to do is look for interesting bits and pieces and explore in the stores for things to use. For example, I have done, and I'm gonna pour some of this out. This is actually broken glass. It's very, very pretty. And I have used that in a, um, in a mixed media project. Um, I've used, I think I used Gorilla Glue or even gel medium would work and you have to let it dry for several days. Um, there are wonderful things like Galaxy Glitter, which is liquid, a uh, liquid paint with glitter in it. Let's see if we can get some of that out so you can see it. Okay, I never have been a big glitter fan. I never liked to use it in school. The kids would get it on their fingers and then heaven forbid, get it in their eye. But when it's in the glue, it's a little safer. Um, but, and then there are things like, this is called Gala Glitz, um, which is just a beautiful collection of different sized chunks of all different kinds of gold and glittery things that can be put on finished products. A lot of these products um, can be found uh, on, in some online places, like one place is called Joggles, J-O-G-G-L-E-S.com. Um, there are several others that um, I can uh, get a list of that to you. Um, if you're going to get materials, I will include that in the packet. But there's very, um, there, there's so many things to explore. There's, um, this is called, this is a watercolor ink um, that has some metallic base to it. Uh, there are sprays. Let's see if this one will work. I did not clean my little nozzle out. Let's see if this one will work. These are acrylic sprays, and if you don't, oh, sorry again, if you don't clean them out really carefully as soon as you use them, they will clog. But they are nice sprays, and they will give like a nice misty effect um, over your project. Um, what I'd also like you to think about are some pieces, uh, well, first let me give you some artists. There's um, Pat Dews, let me get one of her pieces. I was lucky enough to take a class with Pat Dews. She's a wonderful uh, collage artist. This is a small piece of hers. Um, she scraped the background of this. She printed burlap on it. Uh, she did other cutouts, quite lovely, lovely piece. Um, Again, very experimental and very, very beautiful and a very close color combination. She's using uh, brownie oranges and blue. So they're opposite colors, but yet they work because she knows how to control her colors. Um, this is one of my pieces. This is a, um, let's see if we can get you to see that. Um, what I did here, this is a scraped red background um, with a touch of blue and white. I then rolled string, which I showed you in the first, um, the first session, uh, on a roller. I rolled string and then I tore some feathery pieces of paper. I did some dot stamping up here. And then uh, for the focal point, um, there's this uh, silver colored metallic disc that I glued in the corner. So I didn't really have this in mind as I was working, but as this grew, uh, this sort of circle, again, I like circles, appeared and it needed some glitz. So I finished it off with that. So again, your beginning can be completely different when you come to the end. It may, it, this could have been turned this way, it could have been turned this way. And don't forget to do some exploring when you're working because that's very important. Um, there are a few artists that are like Pat Dews, D-E-W-S, to look at. Um, let me get a few books to share with you. I think that's important. I think mixed media artists need to do a lot of looking as well as a lot of making. 
Um, this is called New Creative Collage Techniques by Nita Leland, who is a master. Um, the book is full of projects and ideas. Very, very interesting and inspirational. Um, this is called The New Creative Arts, again by Nita Leland. Um, sort of a Bible, a step-by-step. -step. She shows you uh, how to incorporate painting, drawing, texture, whatever, into your work. Um, and also The Cutting Edge by Mary Todd Bean. Um, she uses her own work as well as the work of many other artists. She gives wonderful demos and wonder wonderful final products. Um, so there, it's very important to look um, as well as make stuff. Um, I hope that this has been an interesting experience. Um, I encourage you to, especially if since you may be locked down through this winter, it's a good time to prepare yourself a lot of backgrounds, explore colors, exp uh, explore textures, um, you know, and just keep making art. Very important. Have fun. Thank you so much.